Hey ho, let's go. Uh, hello, my name is Dr. Mark Allendary. I'm the Medical Director of Infectious Diseases and the Chief Innovation Officer for Access Health Louisiana. I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I serve as the co-chair for the ACY Infectious Diseases Subspecialty Section. You've seen me do these updates now for almost a year in conjunction with the leadership of the ACOI. And I hope these messages are helping you keep up with the latest on COVID-19. I know many of you are in the thick of the fight, and I would like to thank each one of you on behalf of us who focus on infectious diseases for a living and certainly on behalf of the ACOI. So on behalf of the ACOI, I need to ask, are you registered for the ACOI virtual spring meetings? Actually, Mia Terramino, who is the other co-chair, she's doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but uh, I will be doing a, a lecture. So there are three meetings coming up in early May. From May 11th to the 15th, they are focusing on three important areas, all with the opportunity to earn much needed CME credits. So please check them out at the ACOA website and please attend. And again, all right, moving together with the ACOI. We will continue to share information as it becomes available, as well as some hopeful progress that we are seeing. And now on to the stories. And today is it. It's been a year. Uh, it has been a year. And boy, it has been a year. Today is March 11, 2021. And one year ago, the World Health Organization declare, declared what many of us feared when we first heard about the novel coronavirus that the virus was exploding into a worldwide epidemic that could now be classified as a pandemic. Now, I want to dedicate this episode to the recognition of the changes and milestones that we've all endured, not just as healthcare providers, but as human beings. And for me, I began this wild ride by heading up the first federal COVID-19 testing site in the country, happened to have been in my city of New Orleans. I was the medical director uh, for it. Uh, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. We didn't know how the coronavirus transmitted um, and just as many of you who showed up to work every day um, recognizing the inherent dangers of what it was that we were doing at a time when we didn't even know what COVID was or what <laughs> dangers or what the symptoms, um, I, I, at that point, loss of sense of, uh, loss of taste of, and sense of smell, I, it just, today was an emotional day. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that not one of us has been untouched by the pandemic. Some of us have lost loved ones, um, I certainly have. Many of us in the healthcare world have witnessed death and separation from our loved ones. Isolation in our social lives with family and friends as we worked incredible hours to treat patients and save lives. So I, I do encourage you to read the healthcare heroes stories that are featured each month uh, for the last year in the ACOI newsletter to learn more about how some of our fellow ACOI members have made an impact during this time. Each story focuses on a specific experience of our colleagues and fellow members of the ACOI. Check out the link to the newsletters on the resources page of the ACOI website. And I just want to say thank you to all of those uh, uh, healthcare heroes for their amazing sacrifices. And, and also thank you to all of you, my ACOI colleagues, for the sacrifices you all have made uh, as well. All right. One of the good things that happened um, um, uh, was the gratitude we felt for the people we often take for granted. Um, who've become known as essential workers, and those folks are definitively what I refer to as my heroes, uh, those people who keep our lives moving forward, from grocery store clerks to the restaurant workers, my heroes, my heroes, um, to those who provided takeout options, bus drivers and teachers to custodial workers. Uh, it has also shown light on those people who didn't have the luxury to work from home, they also not only expose themselves by doing the jobs that kept them in public spaces that we were all trying to avoid, but they also were ones that, uh, uh, who lived in crowded and inadequate uh, housing ar in, in arrangements and found themselves at higher risk for COVID-19 infections, highlighting 
um, the deep inequities um, that we see uh, that COVID has shown us what those what those deep inequities have been. We also saw women. Um, we also saw women and single moms being especially challenged especially those who were forced to be caregivers, breadwinners, and, and now teachers as they homeschool their children. Um, as a result, more than 2 million have dropped out of the workforce. We've reported on that here before. But here's a statistic that I ran across that really surprised me, and that was 60% of jobs eliminated after COVID-19 struck were held by women. Food insecurity has been highlighted during the pandemic, as school children who regularly counted on subsidized lunch programs suddenly weren't going to school and consequently weren't getting fed. And early in the pandemic, as jobs were lost, families lined up for food as we simultaneously lined up to get COVID tests. And then the lines continued as we lined up to vote. And now today, we are thankfully lining up for the vaccine. A light has been shown on racial inequity as COVID hit communities of color at proportionally higher rates. While one, in two, I'm sorry, while 1.2 out of every 1,000 white person in the United States have perished from the disease, the death toll reached 1.5 out of every 1,000 Latinx person and 1.7 per 1,000 Black American, uh, as well as Native American. Now, these disparities reflect issues in access to health care and the inability for many of those in the frontline jobs to have the ability to take sick leave. Now, subsequently, according to the CDC, COVID has had an effect on life expectancy. Oh, this is like... <laughs> um, has had an effect on, on life expectancy, which fell by more than one year from 78 Point eight years to 77.8 years, so a year. So basically from 79 to 78 years. Now, of course, these numbers are more dramatic for Black Americans, falling uh, 2.7 years, and, and uh, um, for uh, Latinx individuals, it fell also uh, about two years uh, as well. There has been some <laughs> significant mental health crisis that has been brewing before the pandemic and it's only worsened. The good news is the growth in virtual care options as telehealth visits over the phone and Zoom has filled in the gra uh, those gaps, not just for physical health, but also for mental health needs. And that has been a good thing. Just me personally here, um, I've been able to expand my HIV practice as well as Hep C throughout the whole state of Louisiana. A lot of my Hep C patients do not have uh, the uh, capacity for video or, or telemedicine capacity. So just being able to do visits over the phone has been extraordinary. Uh, in fact, there have been several dozen people that I've treated and cured for hepatitis C that I actually never met. I was able to do it completely over the phone. Um, with regular uh, monthly visits with them, with them going to uh, 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 getting blood work at the closest um, uh, uh, lab uh, that they could get blood at, uh, which is you know, um, for our clinic system all over the state. So this has been really incredible. Certainly telemedicine has been. But all in all, we can't ignore the numbers w which exceeded many of the predictions and have been truly astronomical. And as of today, more than 118 million cases of coronavirus uh, illness have been confirmed uh, around the world with more than 2.6 million fatalities around the globe. Now, those numbers are incredibly relevant, but we know those are huge underestimations. Here in the U.S., our numbers accounted for about a fifth of those tallies. The U.S. has also had uh, uh, 30,000, uh, almost 30,000 confirmed cases, uh, and um, we are reaching uh, significantly um, uh, or way over a hundred, uh, half a million uh, cases, uh, and as of today, 524,000 uh, uh, deaths. So as of today, there is good news. Uh, at 6 a.m. Uh, uh, on Wednesday, there had been 
128 million doses uh, have been distributed. 95.7 million doses have been administered. 62.5 million Americans have received at least one dose, and 33 million Americans have received both doses and are fully vaccinated. That's nearly 10% of the population. I can't say this enough. Thank you um, to my colleagues who have risked so much during this time trying to uh, make a difference. Um, it has been incredibly impactful, and um, your, your sacrifices have um, been deeply acknowledged, um, and the work that you have done has been incredible. Um, thank you to the ACY uh, for uh, their amazing response uh, during COVID. Uh, and I also want to uh, thank uh, Gina Kelker, who has been um, a uh, tremendous support in helping me to make these videos uh, and who's been an amazing writer uh, to be writing uh, these um, uh, scripts for the past year. So uh, thank you, my colleagues. Thank you to ACY and thank you to Gina for uh, uh, being able to make all of this happen. So in conclusion, stay on the lookout for our regular updates uh, and to read more from the sources used in this report, go to acoi.org forward slash COVID-19. Together with the ACOI, we'll help you have the latest information to help you respond to your patients and stay on top of the crisis. And please, as always, I love to get your emails Feel free to reach out to me at madairy at mac.com. Please stay safe. I know that we can do this together.